Hey everyone, on Les Stroud's Wild Harvest, I do get the opportunity to show you some tips and some techniques for gathering wild edibles. This is not the be all and end all for what you need to know to gather from the wilderness or do local foraging. There are risks associated, including getting bitten by mosquitoes. The only way to do this properly is to read your books, go online, but most importantly, to seek out a local expert. You will find someone in your area, I guarantee, that is passionate about wild edible plants and let them show you the way to enjoying and partaking of the wild harvest. The creation of cottaging was based around getting us out of the city and interacting with nature again. That was the point of the cottage and what better way to do that than to go out and gather from the wild harvest, to pick wild edibles that you can enhance your cottage cooking with. I wanna show Chef Paul that I don't have to take him out to the mountains or into the deep forest to enjoy the wild harvest. We can just get up from the dock, do a walk off into the forest or the field nearby, and just gather from a smorgasbord of amazing wild edibles. This is the wild harvest. where you step. Let's, let's do this delicately as best yeah. we can. This is a beautiful thing. So we've got milkweed, which if you follow the, the environmental news, you know that monarch butterflies are in peril on a worldwide basis. And of course they love milkweed. How far are we from my cottage? Maybe I'm thinking we, we must have been four or five minutes to get here, yeah. right? No yeah. big deal. This milkweed is profuse here. Look, there's a caterpillar right there. So the monarch butterflies, I see them here classic image of them feeding, getting the nectar, and there's the caterpillars living off the milkweed. This is fantastic, I love this. There's a lot of it, it's profuse here, so that we can gather from it, but we're still gonna gather very selectively. So I'm not gonna be able to give you a big bowl full, but it'll be enough that we can make a meal, okay? Here's what we're looking for. This guy's a great example over here. These tiny little buds here that have not opened up into flowers yet, we're going to gather these. The second part of this plant, I don't know, what's that taste like? <laughs> Actually, I was trying to control my enthusiasm. It's delicious. Good, good. This is actually more what I'm talking about in terms of the stage that we're looking for. So for the flower buds, you see how they're a little bit tighter, younger, right? And as far as harvesting properly, you know, take one, leave one. And it's, let's just stick with that for now. Take one, leave one. But also, while you're at it, go ahead and take these tender young top leaves. Nice, the smaller, nice tender ones, but once, once they get this big, then forget it. One of the things I like to do for Paul is bring him back a surprise each time, so that he's not thinking all day, how am I going to prepare this item or that ingredient? I want to sort of spring it on him, and in this case, I come right back to the milkweed plant, and uh, I'm actually going to take him, again, through a pruning method, the flowers themselves. Now, I know that these flowers are also edible, and often in the form of a fritter. So I'm gonna bring back a bunch of these. The key thing here about this particular plant itself is that it's an incredibly special plant. Uh, most people are aware this is the plant that the monarch butterfly needs to survive. The, the larva, the caterpillar, this is the only plant that they actually exist on as they're growing. And in fact, yeah, yeah. in fact, I can see little, little tiny eggs deposited by the monarch butterfly, right there. The butterflies here in this field will migrate all the way down to Florida. And here's the thing, that's not one butterfly that goes down to Florida and comes back again. It's generations to get down to Florida and then come back again. So how do the ones that are born 
down in Florida know to come back to this field because they will actually come back not only to Ontario, Canada, but right to this field, which is incredibly powerful. That's why these small stands of milkweed and around railroad tracks and on the edges of gravel pits and sides of dirt roads are vital and important because the butterflies that go down to Florida know that they want to come right back to that very field. I guess, I suppose, potentially even that very plant. First of all, I mean, Paul, think about where we are. We're at, we're at the, the cottage gravel pit. Right? This is what I'm talking about. You don't have to go really far. Just There's a gravel pit at, at my cottage, and it's filled with all of this. You know, this is pretty amazing. And I'd forgotten about it. I think I spotted this a few years ago, but we're standing right beside a beautiful elderberry tree. Prune. Take one, leave one. Take one, leave one. That's the best way to harvest this. Often plants or things that you can consume from the forest look unlikely. It's like eating ants or eating cockroaches. I mean, that looks kind of unlikely for our palate. And this looks unlikely, but it makes an amazing coffee substitute. So I don't know how you will be able to make use of this, other than if you think about what you might use coffee flavoring for. I have no idea what you combine that with, but You'll start thinking about it. Oh, I'm, I'm on it. Far, far up north, you'll find lots of this. I want you to pick one of these leaves right here. Oh my gosh, it smells, it smells very minty. Is it familiar? Yeah. Wintergreen. 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 You know, it triggers a memory of gum. Exactly. Gum. Exactly. Hey, Paul. Yes, sir. One of my favorites of all. Mm. Get it on the front of your mouth, the front of your tongue, those taste buds there, and then in the back, and you can eat it and swallow it. So have a taste of this. Okay. Mm. Isn't that good? Sorrel. Wood sorrel, exactly. Yellow wood sorrel. What I should have brought was a pair of scissors, right? You just want to nip off, just sort of like you're cutting the grass. It's really important to have a balanced flavor profile in almost every single dish that I create. Acid, sweetness, salt, bitterness, all applies. This brings in the acid component. Recognize? Cattail. Cattail. But this is now past the season where we can just pull them up and they're succulent down at the bottom. We've missed that stage. But what I really want to show you is right here. See that? Flour. We can add it to flour. I don't believe it can use it just on its own. It's more like a flour additive. I want you to basically go along and gather these guys. You interact with neighbors, I think, up at Cottage Lakes more than you might even do in the city. And so in keeping with that, uh, I've got some friends who are donating to us local deer and local moose meat. Oh, fantastic. So let's take all of the ingredients we've gathered so far and uh, it's your turn now. on everything that I learned from Les and coming up with ideas for tonight's dinner. Um, I really want to make a statement and a, and a connection to the creek and the trees and everything that, that's existing in here. And I want to bring that experience to the table. Uh, not, not every gathering situation is all that easy but it's always fun I want to get into the water here all of this beautiful patch here is pickerel weed it's a gorgeous plant 
This is actually potentially a dangerous thing because you can't sink down deep into the mud and that would be terrible. I have heard people drowning that way actually in the far north and the spruce bogs, but I can still do that here. So what I really have to do is kind of make like an alligator and get on my belly and stay flat to the surface of the water so that I'm not sinking down deep. And yes, there are all kinds of creatures here. All right. Oh yeah. There they are. And I want to collect these seeds. Nice little surprise for Chef Paul. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's leeches. Okay, look, I know this doesn't look all that enjoyable, but the reality is, it's a lot of fun. It's like being a kid again. So I've had a chance to unload my bag and put everything out in front of me. And I'm reviewing my notes. I have the elderberry flowers. I've got the, the cattail that I have to shake all the seed off. I've got the wintergreen, which obviously is gonna go into dessert. At least I can't oh, think, yeah. Okay. All right. You've got more. I've got more. So, this looks beautiful. Hey, these leaves, just think of them like spinach. Eat them raw? No problem. Eat them raw, no problem. Okay. And essentially the same thing with the buds here. Okay. What I didn't tell you is the flowers themselves are also edible. But this is what I wanted to bring for you. This is called pickerel weed. Yeah, go ahead. Pickerel weed. It can go in granola. It can be dried and turned into a flower. It can be added to cereal. You can eat it just as a nibble like this, or you can cook it like rice. And trust me, I went through some effort to get it for you, but you've got all the ingredients I'm going to bring you today. I'm going to go take care of the drinks. I'll leave you to the kitchen. One of the things that I'm going to have to experiment with is using the cattail pollen as a flower. I have a base recipe that I've had in my archives for a couple of decades. I'm going to integrate the cattail in to it it's going to be an experiment. I have no idea what the end effect will be. The most expedient way to remove the pollen actually is to start at the end where we've broken off the, the plant, hold that tight, and then just strip it down with my fingers. Everything comes off one move super quick. What could be a laborious job is now a nothing job. So by simply using a sieve, I'm having the opportunity to refine it done. I think that's as good as it's gonna get, uh, which allows me to now move on to making my bannock dough. I've added uh, some all-purpose flour and some sour cream to the cattail, and now I'm working on making a little bit of a dough. At this stage, it's super, super sticky. As you can tell, I'm having a hard time getting it off my fingers. I'm going to take the flour um, step by step, add it, knead it, until I get to the right texture of what I think is gonna make a delicious bannock. It's almost there, I'm just taking it one step further. One more layer of sour cream. It needs something to help leaven it, which I'm gonna use in baking powder. It needs salt, I didn't add salt yet, but I'm gonna do that. Time for me to learn about this milkweed. Blanching and refreshing greens is something so common in the regular kitchen. Vegetables of all sorts, carrots, cauliflower, spinach, you will cook in a boiling salted water and then so you can stop the cooking process immediately, you drop them into iced water. There is so much flavor in that. It is exactly opposite of what 
everything I know as a cook told me would happen. I was expecting the flavor to wash away, but not at all. It's intensified. I'm gonna do exactly what Les told me, and I'm gonna blanch them again, see where that takes me. Here comes round number two. Now it tastes like a cooked vegetable. This is giving me a chance to layer flavors. Production time. What I'm looking for is right up here. It's not quite ready, and it's not quite in season, and you'll see it. these are just green. They will end up being beautiful, beautiful yellow flowers, but this is goldenrod. And uh, it makes, if I were to start listing the medicinal properties of goldenrod, I'd need 15 minutes. It makes a lovely tea. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Just some nice goldenrod tea. You can hang this and dry it and make an herbal tea that's, you know, nice dry leaves, but um, it'll work beautifully like this as well. Let's get this tea back to Paul. God, this is beautiful. Oh, yes. I've come to a place where I think I'm comfortable with the ingredients. First course is gonna be the one blanch of milkweed. I'm gonna make a vinaigrette. A bit of oil, a bit of vinegar, and adjust the seasoning with sugar and salt. Perhaps add some mustard in there just to get some roundness. It's that easy. Quick test for balance. I think I've got it. All right, time to revisit the bannock. Just had a chance to leaven. Before I get too far with this and my final need, I'm going to add some of the alderberry flowers. Roll it and let it stand for another 15 minutes just so everything that I put in there has a chance to combine. The next thing that I'm going to make is uh, a puree, almost, I, I don't want to use the word chimichurri, but the concept is the same, a, a pureed green combination with layers of flavor. But I need something really that's going to tie the mousse in with the foraged ingredients. Salt, green onions, olive oil, wood sorrel, milkweed. Going with dry leaves, that's when you boil water, pour the water over the dry leaves, steep the tea. Going with green leaves, put it in cold, fill it up with the water that you want, and brew it a bit. I'm harvesting some, some chaga. I'm going to make a beverage with this. Um, I've already made a mushroom broth. And what I want to do is microplane this. Normally, you need to cook it for a long time, very low and very slow. This, I'm hoping, is a counterbalance. I can get it to taste good, I can get the mouthfeel, and I can do it in a hurry. The story's been sort of evolving as I've been working with the food and testing the food. Now I'm going to bring the story to the table. This is one of those things, though, that I have to curate. Take the whole thing? Take the whole thing. You're going to eat it with your fingers. Basic vinaigrette. Wow. Great mouthfeel. That is phenomenal. Like it's fun. I had no idea. I was not expecting that. OK, so it's fresh. It was lively. I'm, I'm, I'm like a, a, a sommelier right now, you know, talking about the wine. But it's the food. There was like this faint, way in the background, hint of of, of light pepper, um, hint of celery, um, good, good gosh, hint of raw broccoli, but these are all hints, very gentle, very subtle. That's beautiful. What's next? This is all about mouthfeel. So the, the mm -hmm. first one was about flavor and mouthfeel. This mm -hmm. one is about flavor and mouthfeel, but this is undoctored, just the same dressing as the first bite. It's fantastic. Why do I even go to the grocery store? This is fantastic. So I've got a soft, buttery, um, I wanna say like a, 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 a baby, if, if baby spinach 
had velvet on it and it was more buttery. That's what that was like. Ah, oh, it's delicious. Wow. The chaga. I've been, awesome. I've been wanting to see, touch, feel, work mm -hmm. with that ingredient forever. It's incredibly healthful. Yeah, it's a phenomenal uh, drink. So I've made a broth. Okay. I've got a mushroom broth and I've microplaned chaga into this. What's microplane? Uh, taking a very fine rasp and then grating the uh, the chaga. Microplane, okay. Microplane, so yeah, very fine, very okay. fine shave. I want us to taste the other almost like forest. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Wow, the overriding closeness to mushroom, right? It's got that earthy, chewy, but delicious blend going on here. Wow, this is good. Mm. This is great. So now I see where, what you're doing. You're taking me on the journey of our journey with the palate. With That's the palate. good. This is moose steak that I've been marinating with game meat or any meat that is very lean, rare is better. Now it's time to do some on grill baking. I want to get some smoke. I've got birch bark in its natural form. Cattail flower in the bannock. Yes. And we have the flower of the milkweed to garnish it out and to flavor it. The blossom. This is the milkweed that was blanched three times. Three times, okay. Well, okay, how did it change? It became more of a, of a vegetable flavor. Okay. Less, less green, but kind of reminded me of a broccoli or something okay. similar. But cooked. But cooked. Okay. Yeah, very familiar. Um, I added, and this dish definitely needed acid. Okay. And when we came across that wood swirl, it was perfect opportunity. Uh, let me stop you. Let me back you up. Why? Why did like you just said this dish definitely needed acid? I have no clue what you're talking about. The palate has all these different taste buds that uh, pick up different nuances. They they pick up different places on your tongue. I'm talking about. Yep. Uh, you get bitter. You get sweet. You get acid. And as a chef, my job is to combine all of those flavors, bring them to your palate. So number one, you can taste them harmoniously, but also you should be able to, on your palate, taste them componently. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh my. Right now I'm enjoying flavors that I've never enjoyed before. I cannot nail this down to a restaurant meal somewhere. Is there another course? Dessert. Mm. You know what's amazing to me? Oh, this How good. far from your cabin did we go? Exactly. Cottage. 600 yards. We, we, we ventured no more than 600 yards from my cottage to acquire these ingredients. Bless the, All right, thank the dessert. You. Thank you very much. You're going to need a spoon as well. Oh, it's warm. It's warm. Okay. So, pickerel weed. Pickerel weed, right. And I did a couple of experiments with it. Sadly, I didn't come up with anything that was distinctive delicious. Okay, that's so, fair. So, in all fairness, what I've done is I've made it a delivery system for this winter green sablion that I made. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, that's good. Mm. All right, here's the plan. Let's finish our dessert. We've got some fading light down on the dock, and to top off this day, I'll share with you my tea. Perfect moments. Cottage country meal. Done right. If you are a cottager, and you get up to cottage country, and you're hanging it on the lake, you are surrounded by nature's supermarket. 
it's really only a walk away, a paddle away. You can bring up your summer corn, and your favorite cut of meat, absolutely. Favorite spices, but you can enhance it all with the wild harvest.